excuse the clutter. I'm still moving stuff around from the art show I just got through doing. But I want to continue with these leaf spring knives. Uh, first thing I want to talk to you about is going through with the plan all the way to the end and thinking it through, which I did not. This is the leaf, one of the examples of the stock that I took apart. This is the shortest one. Uh, it's still bent and it's rusted. Now, I didn't put these in rust remover because they're the ones I was using was long and I was in a hurry and I thought I'll just sand them. So I've got the, got the ones I wanted, clamped them down in my little shop and started sanding. And that's as far as I thought this thing out. Didn't think about past that. Sanded them, had my protective gear on, my mask and everything, leather apron. Um, got done sanding them, looked around the shop and realized I had made an error in judgment, a big error in judgment. Because I have this rust crap all over my shop. So I'm going to have to drop the back, open the front door, get a fan in here and blow it all out the back or the front or whatever. Um, if you're going to sand inside your shop, especially rust, don't do it. Do it outside. Even if you got fans going, it's, you're going to get it everywhere. It's a mess. Now, this is what I started with after I took it apart, different sizes. This is about the original size from uh, end to end. Cut the tip off using an angle grinder. I have a horizontal bandsaw. I put it in the vertical position cut grooves and then I use the angle grinder to uh, cut the handle out and that handle gives me a grip on the back so I don't it doesn't slip out of my hand and I'm going to put the holes in it for the handle this has not been hardened yet so I'm going to put the holes in it do my profiling I'm starting on doing the blade geometry. I'm going to do a lot of it. Uh, I know I risk this bowing back when I heat treat it, but hey, this is an experiment and I'm just seeing what's going to happen. <coughs> now, uh, I'm leaving a little bit of a dull spot for the handle. The wood handle. This is going to have a wood handle on it. These are kind of heavy blades. It was real heavy before I took the uh, metal off it for the handle and uh, clipped the tip, making it a sax. I wanted a heavier knife, and it's one of the reasons I'm starting to make my own knives because nobody seems to like the style of knives that I like or the, have them done up the way I like them. I like a heavier knife. Now, I have videos where blade thickness makes them kind of crappy or not as good for bushcraft and carving. And then I've been doing some experiments and I found out, no, that's not really true. It's just that the way they make a modern knife, it works out that way. And I'm going to bring this bevel pretty high and get a pretty thin cutting edge on this if I can do that. So to still be able to carve, make traps, shave wood, but give me the heft to where it will also be a good little chopper. Um, clearing branches off trees, taking chunks of fat wood out, whatever I need to do where I need weight, but I still want it to be a knife. I can cut meat, cut vegetables, even clean small game. Kind of an all-in-one knife. Uh, it will be good for everything except maybe fighting because of the weight. I don't get into knife fights. I'm not worried about that. Um, 
I've got a longer one of these I'm going to work on when this is done. This is my handy dandy cheap Harbor Freight, which I really like. What I do not like and what I found out is I didn't know what I was doing. I just went out and bought belts, bought a bunch of variety packs, and they work okay, but they're not designed for knives. So I'm going to be blowing through these pretty fast. I'm going to get me, for both my grinders, one specifically designed for the making knives, knife makers. I didn't do that, so I'm going to have to spend some extra money to do that because it takes longer to get these take off metal. So if you're going to end up making knives, get the right equipment. This right here, I really like. Um, if you can afford it, get the model that's a little bit up from this because it's got a little bit more horsepower. But this is fine. This has been doing me really good. I've been able to use it. I mean, I really like it. I may end up getting a more powerful one and then using this just for sharpening. But so far it's been doing good. The main problem I have is these belts are not really designed for knives. And all of my sanders I'm going to convert over to the more expensive belts. But this is where I'm at so far. Um, I like the way this handle feels right now with this hump or whatever here to hang on. Um, I may change that as I put the wood on it. Uh, when you make your own knives, you can vary this width to your own personal preference or to what you think would be good for other people. And so far I'm liking this. It is thick, but it's lightened up quite a bit. I'm not going to plug the hole. I want to leave it there. I'm not going to shine all of this up. I want it to look like it's a kind of a post civilization a post-apocalyptic knife um, that's kind of the look I'm going for but I'm getting ready to uh, do some more blade profiling and when I get that done get the holes drilled I'll let you see how that looks and then it's off to the uh, quench tank and uh, then I start on my longer blade it's about 15 16 inches long the blade will be that long but for right now, that's what she looks like. That's what it came from, just a longer piece. Um, so far, I really like the uh, spring steel. like bed frame steel too, but this is uh, working out pretty good. But I'll know after I get it quenched and do some testing on it, I really think this is going to be my main carry knife when I'm out and about fishing and stuff because I'm really liking the way this one feels. And everything I can look find on the internet says this should make a really strong blade. But I'll let you know how this everything turns out when the next step is ready. Uh, attempt number two. I forgot to turn the mic on. Okay, this is what I started with. Spring steel from a small car. This is the smallest piece that came off the uh, set. And that's what they pretty much all look like. And what I ended up with, after a lot of labor, is this. Sax design. Like the handle size. Put a little bit of a rise on it. Now, this knife is pretty heavy. It's pretty thick. It's not pretty heavy. It's heavier than a lot of knives, which I like them that way. I want something I can carve with, clean game, mainly prepare food and stuff, and if I have to, whack some branches off out of the way. And the weight of this and the blade profile should allow me to do everything I need to do. Now, excuse me, this has not been hardened. Um, I knew I was going to have to take a lot of metal, move a lot of it off. And it would have been just too hard once it's been hardened. And I have multi-purpose, multi-use belts. I need to get some design for uh, knife making. It makes it harder to take this metal off on these belts. So I'm going to have to buy some new ones. 
Now, that's the back spine, pretty thick. Let's see if I can get this. So, all of this is done by hand with no jig or guide. I'm just freestyling it, which is what I want to do. I want these knives to be more rustic, more post-apocalyptic, zombie, whatever. I just don't want a really nice shiny knife. Plenty of people make those. Um, some people seen my earlier knives. They like the design. They like the fact that they are rustic. That's why I'm leaving this on it, leaving all of this. Now, I went ahead and drilled the holes in the handle because once this is hardened or even semi-hardened, it's almost impossible. It's hard to do it anyway with this steel. Um, it's been heated up. It's been flattened, a little bit of shaping, um, but it's still really hard. Now, because of this thinness and this thickness, when I quench this, because it hadn't been quenched yet, or heat treated, there's a chance it's going to want a bow. Now, I think what I'm going to do when I put it in the oil, I'll put it in at an angle like this so that this goes into the oil. And after it's in there for a second, raise it up a little bit so that this is in the oil. So I get maximum hardness here, differential hardness here, and that should keep this straight. And I don't need to harden this. It's tough enough. Being a little bit softer than the rest of the knife will actually make it work a little bit better. But that will be my next video when I uh, quench this. I've got to quench this. I've got to start working on a lawnmower blade sacks for somebody. So I'm going to put that in another video. And then I'll show you after the quench, um, after I get the edge on it, and hopefully after I get the wood handles put on it. But thank you for watching the video.